Now that we've gone over what a camera in general is, and what the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO speed of a camera is, let us now focus again on a device that keeps it from being an expensive paperweight. Then again, this device could also be a pricey paperweight in of itself, if there wasn't a camera to harness its capabilities in the first place. That device I am getting at is the lens. But not just any lens, as there are generally two types of lenses out there. The prime lens and the zoom lens. Prime lenses are fixed at one distance, meaning you'll have to move yourself around physically to get the ideal shot based on distance. However, a prime lens is generally better at handling depth of field due to its larger aperture. Prime lenses can also take pictures faster due to, remember, the aperture being connected to the shutter speed. But in addition to that, prime lenses can also handle dim locations better, as well as being better at making blurry backgrounds for the depth of field to really highlight what is in the picture. There is also the sentiment by some that the lack of a zoom feature is good due to how the zoom feature in the past would degrade the quality of an image the more it zooms in on something. Though that last one is very arguable due to how technology has improved over time. How many times have I said that now? Hmm. Anyway, the main downside of the prime lenses is that they don't feature any zoom capabilities at all. Again, it either requires you to move around to a specific distance, or you could use a different prime lens for a different distance. As you might have guessed at this point, the main advantage of a zoom lens is its ability to zoom, which means that the zoom lens is more easier and convenient when it comes to handling large distances. Now yes, you could just technically move closer or farther away from the subject of interest so that the lens with the better aperture can take the picture, but that can depend on whether you value convenience or arguably better results. And that wasn't even mentioning some of the cases where only a zoom lens is possible for use. For example, if you are filming something that is far away and constantly moving, such as someone who is surfing, I doubt a prime lens would be the best course of action unless you felt like going swimming that day. Another example would be being able to take pictures of wildlife from a safe distance, as some wild animals may not appreciate the company from anyone. There are also technically two more types of lenses called the parfocal lens and the varifocal lens. Though because their focal lengths can change, these types of lenses are categorized as a zoom lens. With a parfocal lens, it has the ability to change the focal length while recording, which means that the focus will be constantly maintained on the subject even when zooming in and out. With a varifocal lens, the focus would have to be adjusted on the fly, which would be difficult to do in a seamless fashion when recording video. That's because these lenses are more geared towards photography, as making constant manual adjustments is expected in the world of still images. Though funny enough, you are more likely to see the casual filmmaker using a varifocal lens as opposed to a parfocal lens for two main reasons. One is that parfocal lenses tend to be more expensive, and two is that cameras nowadays come with some sort of workaround substitution, allowing filmmakers to get around the limitations of the varifocal lenses with features such as face tracking, for example. Still, whenever it comes to professional videography, the parfocal lens will tend to be preferred. Though I should mention that the results ultimately come down to how the filmmaker handles their tool. 
So keep that in mind when filming, regardless of the camera or lens you use. That's not all though, as there are many different lenses out there that are defined by how far they can go when it comes to zooming. 